Hey everyone, and welcome back to Sports Design School. Now today I've got an awesome video for you guys. I'm going to be showing you this UGA design and letting you peek behind the curtain and see kind of what I did to recreate this design. This isn't going to be a full tutorial, but instead I'm just going to break down the PSD that I have uh, and walk you through step by step through each layer and why I did what I did. And of course I will be including the free PSD to download at the link in the description if you want to check that out. Unfortunately, I'm not able to include these images, but the layers and all of those things will be there for you to download and insert your own images if you would like to. But so let's just go ahead and dive in. I went ahead and just duplicated um, this PSD and then I took everything out and I'm just starting with the basics for now. So as you can see, I just have this and let me turn off this layer too and the camera raw filter. So right now I just have, oh, and then let me make sure, okay, levels. I just wanna make sure I have everything off for you guys. And it looks like I do. Okay, so this is what I started off with. So you can see here we have this cutout of Aziz Ojolari, Georgia football player. And then just a solid background, I just hit color fill. And that's pretty simple to do, most of you guys know how to do that. Now my first thing I did is I said I wanna kind of make this cutout pop a little bit more, which again, shameless plug, if you haven't seen our how to make your images pop video, make sure you check it out. But look at the camera raw filter before and after. It's literally insane how much detail we got out of this. And I'll go ahead and click on so you can see what settings I did. So all I did is played around with some of the colors. So I turned the blacks down to 62, the highlights down to negative 24. Uh, the clarity and texture played around with those. Um, those are all of my settings. And then turned the saturation up just to really make the reds pop. But so there we go. So we have the original cutout. And then what I did, which I talk about in the how to make your images pop video is I just put a high pass filter on top to bring out some of the details. So kind of like through the cheeks here, you can see just a little bit more detail, uh, a small little um, thing. And I turned the fill on that down to 70. Now, similar to what we did with that Donovan Mitchell design, I just added a gradient over the bottom of this cutout because I knew I wanted to put like a player or a cutout right here. So a gradient was a great way to kind of fade out um, the bottom parts of this image. And then that's when I brought in my next cutout. So I just did, and let me turn off these camera off filters too. So I just did this cutout from a game. So this is just a player tackling Bo Nix. Um, and so what I did is I just cut it out, and then for this part of the grass right here, so it's really just a normal cutout, and then for the grass, I just pulled up my brush, and then smushed it down, and then made sure my hardness was all the way down, maybe a little bit bigger. And I literally just like kind of brushed a rough area right here. Um, so it's not like super hard lines, and it's just kind of a little, like, oh, that's, the ground. Um, just a like cool little detail, I think. And then like I did with my background, I added the camera raw filter just to give it some more pop. Again, I'll click on the settings on that so you can see what I did. So for this one, I just increased the clarity and the texture just to give it some more detail throughout our image. So there we have it. And then I did the same thing with our high pass filter, um, which if you don't know how to get this look, you just duplicate your image. Oh, you just duplicate your image and then you can just hit filter, other, and high pass. And then once you have that, you can just hit overlay. Now I already have this one done right here, so I'm not gonna do it twice. And then looking at this front image, I decided that I wanted to play around with the color a little bit. So I added a curves adjustment tool just to give some more like darkness to some parts of the image. So let me double click. I just did this. So you can see kind of right here in this like mid tone, the highlight area. I just dragged this down and I brought my shadows up a little bit. 
which of course you can add a curves adjustment tool by just going up to adjustments and then hitting curves. And that was pretty simple so far. The next thing I did is I went through and I just added this brush overlay that I have in the background. And I think I just got this from a pack on Creative Market. Um, I'll see if I can find it where I got this brush. And if you want to check it out, um, I'll put the link in the description. Again, I'm including the PSD. So if you just want to go into the PSD and use this brush, um, you're more than welcome to. Or this like texture. It's not an actual brush file. And then what I did is I wanted to kind of do like a little bit of a like I don't, like duo image effect kind of include some of like the Georgia Stadium imagery kind of through his arms and stuff. So what I did is I just created a clipping mask onto this cutout um, beneath the details because I want to make sure the details still shine through. I set my blending mode to overlay and then the parts that I didn't want this to show up in like his face and stuff I just created a mask and I just painted those parts out. So like his arms right here. And then what I did is after doing that, I duplicated that and just set it in the background. Um, and I set this to overlay as well, just because like sometimes I literally just play around with blending modes to see which one looks coolest. Um, and I just like happened to get to overlay and I was like, that looks fine. Um, so I just had that in the background like that and I scaled it up just to give more detail to our background. It was kind of looking a little bit boring. So the next thing I did is I wanted a little bit more separation between this cutout and our back cutout. So I just created a little circle gradient um, right here. And just to do that, you create a new layer, pull up G for gradient, and just choose this option. And then you can just click and drag and you make a circle. And I just kind of played around with it until I got it just how I wanted it. And that's what I ended up with for that. Pretty simple so far. And that's one of the points I really want to make is you see like these super fancy designs that designers put out and you look at it and it's like, oh my gosh, this is so complicated. Like how on earth did they do this? The truth is these are just basic steps. Like this isn't anything that um, you're not able to do. In fact, you're very capable of doing this exact design. Um, it's ma just a matter of like knowing good design principles and just following through with a vision that you have. So then next I got to this point and I started thinking, okay, this design needs a little bit more. Um, so I started off by just playing around with the color. So I just did a levels adjustment tool, which you can go up and just hit levels. And what I did is I just dragged this over to the left a little bit to kind of lighten up parts of my image. I use levels all the time just to like play around with the like shadows and highlights in my image. So I started off by just doing that. And then what I did is I added this natural light leak uh, overlay. And I got this from a pack I bought off of Creative Market. I think I got it on like Black Friday last year. So Black Friday for Creative Market, it's a little late for me to promote this now since it's December, but um, if you're watching this live. But for um, Black Friday, like Creative Market normally has like half off of everything. So normally you can get awesome deals on like font packs or like overlays and stuff like that. So I think I got this for like 15 bucks or something for a pack of like so many of these. But so I set this to linear dodge add, which is a good way. Anytime you have like a light leak or a light overlay, that's what you want um, to set your blending mode to just to make sure the color really shines through. And as you can see, that just did a whole lot for this image, just a cool detailed effect. So then from here on, it's pretty simple. Let me just make sure we covered all of our bases. Okay, we have the text here, but I'll get to that towards the end. So then what I did is I just added in this Georgia logo on the bottom. Um, if you keep up with Georgia football design in particular, you know a big thing for them for some reason is they just make everything really small. So like this logo on a normal school I feel like would be a little bit bigger, but they just I just took it and made it small to replicate that kind of style. 
And then what I also did from this point is I wanted to play around with the lighting just a little bit more in this image. So I added another levels adjustment to just bring these back colors down. Um, because you can see like, let me just set this to normal for now. So you can see this part is like red and then this part is black and then this part is kind of like a brown. Um, and when you turn it to linear dodge add, this part remains, this part disappears, but then this part lightens everything underneath it. Um, and I just wanted to maintain some of the dark elements of this for our design. And so what I did is I just added the levels adjustment tool. Again, just taking this and dragging it to the left a little bit and taking this and dragging it to the left as well. So those are my settings I did for that. And then for my color, for pretty much any design I do, I like to take a gradient map, which you can just go up to right here um, and hit gradient map. Um, I'd love just throwing a gradient map just to add like a subtle, like uniform color profile over everything. So sometimes like these reds and these reds and these reds uh, don't always like match and sometimes they can be a little bit off, but adding a gradient map is just a good way of getting a good tone um, over everything. And of course, I just set my fill down to 13. Now, a lot of people ask me all the time, they say, why did you turn your fill down and not your opacity? And that's a great question. Uh, so I'm just going to turn our fill all the way up. And you can see this is the original gradient map I went with, which does not look very good. But when you turn it down, it really allows you to play with the color. So here's what I do if you turn the opacity down and you can see it just kind of gets a little bit milky but when you turn the fill down it actually interacts with the colors more naturally now you might be thinking it looks the exact same and you know what to be honest it's probably a subtle difference um, but I personally just think gradient maps uh, when you turn the fill down it looks really good there are some times when you are working with colors let's just say if I take a red rectangle and I'm just going to set this to, let's just do orange. So if you turn the opacity down, it gets kind of milky like that to where it's a little bit see-through, where if you have your fill down on like a blending mode. So if you turn your opacity down, it gets like an effect like that versus if you turn your fill down, Okay, <laughs> you guys are going to be laughing at me because it looks the exact same. I promise you there's a difference. I just always go with the fill. Um, but anyways, so that's just what I did for that. And I have my fill turned down to 13%. This is also a good time to remind you guys that if you're not subscribed to our channel, make sure you subscribe. We have tons of awesome videos just like this coming out all the time. Uh, and with each of those videos, we try to put out the PSDs completely free for you guys. So make sure you subscribe. And if you are enjoying this video so far, make sure you drop a like. Next, I have this layer right here, which doesn't look like it does a whole lot, but let me explain what it is. So I have it set to multiply. So what I did for this is I just created a white image and then I added some noise and grain to the outside. So then when I set it to multiply, the white disappears and my noise on the edges remains. So let me show you how I did that real quick. So I just went up and I hit solid color and I just set my color to white. And then I hit filter, camera raw filter, convert to smart object. And then I just went down to effects and I did some vignetting and I added some grain. So you can see just like that. Now, I don't think my vignette was as, maybe something like that, I think is what I had. And then what happens is when you turn your blending mode to multiply, it gets rid of all of the white parts and it just leaves these grain details on the edges. So it gives it a nice subtle vignette, but it also adds some noise to the edges of your image, which I just think looks cool. But that's what I did for that. And then I took, so I'm at this point, right? And I'm pretty much close to being done with the design. So then I added a couple more detail things to really push my design over the edge. So there's this light overlay, which you can see right through here. Let me turn it on and turn it off for you. 
It's kind of like a light streak effect. And to be honest, I've had this for so long now, I don't remember where I got it. But it's something I use a lot in darker designs because it shows up and gives it a nice detail. I'll try to search for where I found it, but um, if not, just know this is what I used. Let me turn it again to normal. So this is what it looks like on normal. I always turn it just to linear dodge add just because I think it interacts with the colors a little bit better. So you can see these lines right here. And I have this fill turned down to 61. Again, fill not opacity. Um, and then what I did is I just took this film grain and added it over my image and I set it to screen. And this film grain is awesome. I got it from a free pack. Um, I've linked to it. I've talked about it in a few videos now. But it, there's just a pack of like 30 free like film grain textures that you can download. Um, and I'll link that down in the description. It's awesome. I highly recommend it. You just add it over any design. Um, and I've used it so many times for my recent designs recently. So I definitely recommend checking that out. But that's it. That's really all I did for this design. Um, I do want to point out that this, when you first look at it, looks like really cool, looks really impressive. Maybe it looks awful in your opinion. Uh, it's up to you. But this, the simple truth behind this design is that it's pretty simple to execute. Like you saw, this isn't anything more advanced or many or more difficult than what we've talked about in some of our more basic videos. But it's something that anyone can do just have the right vision in mind and the right like design principles to know like the placement of the cutout in relation to this. Oh, let me talk about the text real quick because I know some of you guys want to know about the text. So for this, continuing with the tradition of making everything super small, I just added some really small text and I added the Mississippi State logo, which I got off of uh, sportslogos.net. Shameless plug. So if you want to download some awesome logo files at pretty high resolution, check out that website. And so what I did, Georgia all the time has like just text and they add like rectangle blocks behind it. Um, so really you just like bring up your text tool and you type whatever and then you take your rectangle tool and you just put a rectangle behind it. And for this font, this is a very popular font in sports design. Texas uses it. Georgia uses it all the time. Um, I'm trying to think of other schools. I know ESPN, if you watch their college football broadcast this year, they use this font all the time too. It's called Integral. Um, and I think there are, you can buy it. It's like pretty expensive. Or there's also, I saw someone post about it the other day. You can download it kind of free from a, a little bit of a sketchy website, but um, if that's something that you're really interested in downloading, uh, just give it a quick Google search and you might be able to find it. But guys, that's all I've done for this design. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure you drop a like on the video. Also, we're still selling those Sports Design School stickers. I'll put the link to those down in the description. Uh, anytime you buy one, to be honest, we don't make a whole lot of money. We make like 10 cents, but it's just awesome. Uh, giving you guys a way to rep sports design school. Maybe share it with your friends. Maybe share it with your uh, people closest to you. But other than that, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a good one.